Welcome and welcome to Root Source Health and Wellness, your partner in integrative health, incorporating mind, body, soul, and spirit. We discuss how a new paradigm of health awareness is evolving to include the whole person model. I am Tracy Palmatier, founder of Root Source Health and Wellness, nutrition expert, registered and licensed dietitian, alpha gal food allergy expert, herbal enthusiast, gardener, artist, and energy worker. So as a dietitian, I educate my community on nutrition as well as shed a light on the field of nutrition and being an entrepreneur within this field. So today I have Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD, who has been a good friend and colleague as well as given me inspiration and motivation throughout the years. So she is a dietitian and author of Eat, Skate, Win, Seven Steps for Your Youth Hockey Star to Eat Like a Champion. Welcome, Kim. Hey, Tracy. Good to be here. <laughs> so I thought today we could just talk a little bit about the field of nutrition, maybe a little bit about your background, your expertise, and just some fun stuff about nutrition and whatever else comes up. So so again, thanks for being here. And so um, if you can maybe start by talking a little bit about how you got your start with nutrition, um, either with schooling or work, or what do you feel? Well... I was in my late 20s, early 30s, and I decided that I was going to go back to school and I wanted nutrition. I finally had narrowed that down. Um, my undergraduate was in psychology and I spent 10 years just kind of living, you know, working, not really knowing what I wanted to do. And then I had always had the pull for nutrition from when I was younger. But like I said before, I couldn't hack the chemistries. But now later in life, I was just like, well, you know, I think I can wrap my brain around it. And so um, at 33, I applied and was accepted to East Carolina University for to pursue my graduate degree in nutrition. And I spent how many years there? I graduated in 1999, passed the RD, did my internship and then passed my RD exam. Um, <laughs> when I was seven and a half months pregnant with my first son. Uh -oh. <laughs> like November of 2000. I figured if I don't take this exam now, I'm never going to take it because I didn't know what motherhood was going to be like with a newborn, but I pretty much imagined that I wasn't going to have time to study and my sleep was going to be greatly impacted. I was correct. <laughs> so I'm glad I passed that exam beforehand. And then I, um, I went on to continue to teach at East Carolina University and, uh, that I, I love teaching. I loved getting to know the students. I loved showing them how uh, food could help them become a better athlete, could help them feel uh, more awake and alert in the classroom, could help them lose weight. Uh, and, and they were always coming up to me and saying, gosh, if I had known that you know, X, Y, and Z would have helped me, I would have started it earlier. My times in the pool have gotten better. I'd get emails from my uh, cross-country students. Hey, Mrs. Lucard, I just PR'd in this certain race and I was accepted. And she won a spot to like, I think it was regionals or nationals one year. Um, I helped a young man who uh, always, his dream was to become an ECU Pirate football player, but he wasn't your top pick. And he always wanted to do walk-ons. And one year I reviewed his three-day diet analysis that I always had my students do at a certain time during the class. And I gave him some feedback and he took it and he went to walk-ons the next day because I knew the date of the of the walk-ons. The next day he wasn't in class. And I was like, uh-oh, Drew didn't make it. And he comes back in a couple of days later and I was like, you didn't make it, did you? And he's like, no. I said, guess what? Now you know what they're looking for. So the next time you go, you'll know exactly what to expect. And I got chills just telling a story because the next time he went, he made the team. Awesome. And he, um, I remember it was the end of one of my semesters. It was April. I was in the library. I was entering my grades and I checked my emails and Drew had sent me an email. Hey, Mrs. Lucard, guess what? I'm an ECU pirate football player now, you know? That's awesome. And he gave me his picture with his, um, you know, jersey on. And I was just so proud of him, you know? I know he didn't continue to play football after college. He went on to live a different type of life, 
but just the mere fact that I was able to help him with nutrition to achieve that collegiate goal that no one thought was possible just made me so happy. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, I guess, the start of my career was ECU saying, sure, you can come in. We'll, we'll take you. And I was very grateful for that. Actually, when I got there, I was given an assistantship right off the bat, but I hadn't been in school in 10 years. And I was just like trying to juggle schoolwork and a job. And I was like, I can't do this. And so I had to tell the chair of the department that I needed to step back from my assistantship that semester and then just really wrap my brain around my studies and and get that part going again. And she understood. And then, you know, I was able to pick up and get assistantships later on. And the assistantships were what helped me get my foot in the door with teaching. And so. Fantastic. So that story you. makes me wonder, is that what sparked your interest in writing a book in, in that topic of sports? Um, not really. It was my son's. And um, they started hockey at six and eight, oh, which wow. even in Eastern North Carolina is late because we have ice year round. Some people don't know that to this day, which is crazy. But yes, you, you can have ice year round just about anywhere if you've got good refrigeration in, in a facility. And uh, most of the boys and young girls that played with my son started at like three and four learning how to skate. And so Robert and Duncan started at six and eight. And Robert's first year he was on the developmental team and um, he would be really excited to get on the ice and then he'd get off the ice and he'd be practically in tears and it really made me upset and he would tell me that the kids were bullying him the kids were making fun of him because he couldn't skate as fast he didn't understand the game as well as they did and that really made me sad and then so Robert and I had a talk and I said you know what Robert mommy knows stuff that most hockey parents don't know and they had already been in my classes you know at six and eight they were veteran students right. in my classes at ECU and so I said will you will you work with mommy on on what foods you eat and he said yes and so we started slow really slow you know slowly starting to learn and within a year he was awarded most improved and um so it was really the, the love of my sons because what really, really broke my heart was in a competition, you have, you know, first, second, and third, and then you have something called for the games, and then you have something called a skills competition. And that particular season, Robert was a developmental player, but he was asked by the coach to be in the speed drill. And he helped the team win the speed drill. But yet when they invited the team out onto the ice to be presented with their third place medals, the coach stopped Robert from going onto the ice and said, you're not part of the team. Mm -hmm. And Robert ran to a place in the rink and just started crying. And I was just like, I didn't know what to say. I was brokenhearted. And the um, head of our hockey association came around and she gave him the medal. And she said, you are a part of the team. You earned this medal. And really, from that day forward, I was just like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. And um, we continued to work on nutrition with Robert. And um, he had to take a year off in the sixth grade from hockey because all his friends went to Raleigh to play, but we didn't have enough kids to play his, his level um, in Greenville. And Duncan was still playing at a, at, a, at a younger level, so I couldn't be split between the two. Plus I was working at ECU and at Cypress Glen at that point as a, as a dietitian for the retirement home. And so I, um, I worked with him on nutrition in his weightlifting. I worked with a great uh, weight trainer in town who was already training his son and a, another younger man who was about Robert's age. So Robert continued to learn about nutrition. And now we, we fast forwarded to how do I eat before and how do I eat after to gain muscle and it, from the sixth grade, he started at 4'11 and 72 pounds when he was 11 years old, a few months before he turned 12. And his trainer said, he won't last a day without food in the wild. And I looked at Johan and I said, trust me, he's eating. Mm -hmm. And um, by the time he was, so that was the beginning of sixth grade. By the time it was spring when he, in the seventh grade, he had grown to five foot seven and he had gained up to 114 pounds. 
Wow. Now that still sounds very thin, but that's a practically a 40 pound weight gain. Right. And it was muscle. Yeah. And I have video and you can see this kid's vertical jump and you can see this kid's pull up. And and he um so that was that was what really spurred me on. And that really was when um in the sixth grade that um it was spring of 2013 when I started to write my book and I was working with my uh, book writing coach, Donna Kozik. So it was when Robert was in um, the uh, second semester of sixth grade, I believe it was, when I started to outline my book and write it. Mm -hmm. So it was it was helping it was helping him and Duncan. Um, Duncan, not so much. Robert was really the focus. And um and then he was my kid who went on to become a vegetarian at 15. Wow. Wanted to be a vegetarian at 13. I was like, no, I'm sorry. You don't have a wide enough variety of foods to choose from right now. We need to, we need to wait a couple of years. And in ninth grade, he, he dove in. He's like, I want to be a vegetarian. And he's a vegetarian to this day. And he's 23. Wow. So I was going to ask, what is maybe one of the top things you recommend for kids um, that are really trying to improve their endurance or their whatever it is for sports just to improve. Um, just first thing, and this is the first thing that I work on with my my hockey parents because everybody wants to know what do I eat before practice? What do I eat before a game? That's a great question. But what are you eating every day? Right. What are you eating day in and day out? So one of the first things that we work on after I do their assessment is making sure their son or daughter is eating three meals, eating a mid-morning snack, a mid-afternoon snack, a pre-skate snack, a post-skate recovery snack, and a bedtime snack. The majority of the skaters that I work with do not need to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I have worked with a handful that have had to make major changes. I mean, I've worked with kids that had elevated liver enzymes. Their A1C, they were like borderline diabetes. Their endocrinologist was scared. And the mom worked with me in my group. And she's like, his endocrinologist was blown away. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because mom and son worked together as a team. Mm -hmm. I yep. can't make that happen if they're not willing to learn and try what I'm suggesting. But bottom line, the first thing, make sure they're drinking enough water. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, foundation, water and sleep right? And then go to their foods, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then the three snacks throughout the day, a minimum. And sometimes parents are like, oh my God, my kid can't eat that much food. And it's like, it's not that much food. You know, we tailor the food portions to their needs. So a snack might not be anything more than maybe it could be like a few almonds and a low fat cheese stick in between classes in high school, sure. but they're going to get a little bit of calcium in those almonds. They're going to get protein, a little bit of protein. They're going to get some protein in that cheese stick. And it's going to pack a punch with satiety until they get to lunchtime. And it's going to add the calories because what parents and skaters don't understand is what you're eating at breakfast, mid-morning snack and lunch, you're really stocking your tank for your afternoon practices. If you sleep in and you don't, or you skip breakfast, and then you skip your mid-morning snack, and then you only have your lunch, you're going to show up to practice, whether it's hockey, lacrosse, skating, mm -hmm. cheerleading, swimming, soccer, whatever, you're going to show up with maybe 50 to 60% of what your body needs. And no matter how much you push your body, you're not going to be able to give your best. Right. And in order to improve your confidence and make the coach recognize you that you should earn more playing time or move up on the ranks of the lines like in ice hockey you're not going to get there so bottom line water sleep water three meals three snacks the right. minimum and then you go from there and i think it's so important that you make that we provide easy snacks that are whole foods for parents. So, you know, you don't have to be out there cooking meals or snacks. It could just be a whole food that you just say, here you go, you know, and it's easy. It's, it's grab and go type foods. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be so complicated. So I love that. Um, so changing gears, maybe just a little bit. So I kind of want to talk a little bit too about the profession and maybe, um, some advice that you would give to maybe some new 
some students or um, people that are just graduating, um, you know, we don't learn business in our undergrad at all. And so when you get out into the real world, you're just kind of like, okay, I'm out here on my own. And if you haven't had any business classes, you're, and you're looking to be an entrepreneur, you're kind of, kind of out there on your own. So you got to navigate all of that by yourself. So um, what, what advice can you give to those that are maybe trying to start out uh, in the nutrition world? So there would be um, dietitian entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, there's many different ways they can go that aren't expensive to begin with. Um, I think the first the first book that I read was by Kathy King Helm. I think she only goes by Kathy King now. It was called The Entrepreneurial Nutritionist. And I bought that, I think, right at the beginning of grad school because I knew when I moved down here, my goal was to eventually be standalone and have my own business. And um, so that book was interesting. Um, nowadays, it's so much easier. <laughs> you know, you can go on YouTube and you can listen to um, RDs that have their own practice and you can get advice from them. There are a ton of business coaches out there. Um, you have to pick and choose. You have to, you know, who's going to mesh with you? What's your investment going to be? Because you're not going to learn it for free. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say for those per, those dietitians that are thinking about becoming an entrepreneurial nutritionist or a, a standalone dietitian, that um, do your research on YouTube, maybe follow what, somebody on Instagram that has their own practice that teaches other dietitians how to do it. They do give away free information that you can glean, glean information from, and then uh, just do a search of books. There's so many different books out there that could help you. Um, for me, it was just trial and error. You mm -hmm. know, I, in 2012, I just slapped up my Facebook, my Facebook group, and it was an open group at that point. And, and I started my blog articles on blogger.com back in 2012. And I just started putting information out there. And I didn't even have maybe 30 or 36 people that had liked my Facebook page. I had a hockey mom who had found me and she sent me a message. I love your stuff. There's nothing like this out there. Mm -hmm. And that was like, cool. I've got something that no one else is doing. Gave you some fuel. Yeah. And <laughs> so um, there's so many different ways to go that you have to get known, you know. So if you wanted to start your own Instagram, channel and start putting little snippets up there and and get people asking you questions or you know try to have a free class to 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 start doing your own market research because i knew from the beginning i wanted to work with hockey players that's not the norm <laughs> usually people are like i don't know what my niche is going to be and um one thing that that i would tell aspiring dietitian entrepreneurs is I'll give you the same same homework my book writing coach gave me if I woke you up at three o'clock in the middle of the night what would you write about mm. and so that might help you discover your avatar a lot of times your avatar tends to be you mm -hmm. true like like your alpha gal information you've you've done a lot of research on that you're helping yourself with that true and yeah. so you're your own study <laughs> exactly <laughs> and and I was my own study with hockey nutrition and uh so there's no there's no one way but I'd say if you even after you even before if you know even before you sit for that RD exam if you want to open your own doors start doing your research mm -hmm. start asking people questions I just go for it. Yeah. I also found talking to other colleagues that have done what I'm looking to do, um, mm -hmm. just kind of pick their brain and say, how did you, how did you do this? How did mm -hmm. you get started? Um, I've done that a couple of times. I've also reached out. There's a, in every community, there's a, a small business, um, uh, 
what is it called? A small business bureau or mm -hmm. there's so many free uh, classes and information. You can go and talk to people. That was a good resource for me. Um, there's only so much you can glean from that. Um, again, you know, it's writing a business plan and <laughs> which is all wonderful, but um, putting the steps, the action steps in motion is a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I think, I think all of it is, is so important. Um, and just, I, I really stress taking business classes too, just while you're in college, do it. It doesn't sound fun and exciting, but, <laughs> but especially like ECU now has an entrepreneurial track in yeah. the business program. And, um, unfortunately the way our curriculum is built, I was always told that, that we didn't have space. I mean, we barely had space for any electives. Sure. So because of everything that we had to do for the national board, right? Um, so that's why I, I thought it'd be great to bring in, just have like a little workshop event. So those dietitians that wanted to start learning and could hear from dietitians out there that were already in practice, at different levels would be great. I mean, hearing from someone who's blowing the roof off and is a million dollar dietitian, which is possible, mm -hmm. um, is wonderful. But it's also nice to hear from the people that are just getting started or just starting to ramp up. Sure. And that gives that can give you a little bit more hope of, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get there. I really want to get there. Mm -hmm. But this is where I'm at right now. And what are the baby steps that I need to take? Sure. And even possibly be a mentor for those students to kind of mm -hmm. walk them through everything. Yep. So do you see the field of nutrition kind of uh, kind of changing um, since you've been in school? Do you, as far as um, track work and then um, just kind of outside of that, do you see it changing at all? Shifting? I don't know what the tracks are now. You mean the um, in the internship? I mean, when I went through it and probably when you went through it, it was food service, mm -hmm. community nutrition yep. and clinical. And I don't even think we had a couple weeks to like pick some place where we could go to specialize. Um, I know nowadays there are programs that like will let you do like a month in sports nutrition during your internship. But um, I'm not sure if the tracks have changed or not. Right. I did have a little flexibility. I, I could choose one facility over the other. Um, I was lucky enough. Um, but, and just by the way, if people don't know what we're talking about, after you go through your undergrad degree, <laughs> you have to do a year internship, which is typically unpaid. <laughs> um, and there's, are there different lengths, you know, I know mine was a year. I don't know if they're shorter or longer at different um, my knowledge, it's still 1200 hours, right? It depends on practice hours. hours. Yeah. So it's, which is about a year long. So that's yeah. side of your core, um, your core classes for undergrad. So, yep. So, so now they'll be doing undergrad and their masters, right? It is that turns it into a seven year degree. Okay. I didn't realize if you think that. about it. It's four years and then two years for master's and then another year for the um internship unless right. there's some way to start your master's work when you're a senior and kind of collapse that time right right which would be nice yeah mm -hmm. so do you want to share a little bit about your own personal nutrition practices that that maybe you because I always get the question you know well what does a dietitian eat you know and <laughs> How do you stay so healthy or how do you, um, you know, what are your, your routines and practices? Well, I'm a performance dietitian and it's not only with sports. It's also with how I feel throughout the day. And um, I'm always thinking of how something will impact my blood sugar and my energy level. So I typically do not start my day with cereal and milk and toast. Mm-hmm. I usually start it with um, my coffee, which is decaf with a bunch of soy milk in it. And I might have an apple with some cashews. I like honey roasted cashews. Didn't have any in the house today. I bought pickled, dill pickled flavored 
I love those for a snack. I'm not quite so sure how they would go with coffee. We'll see. <laughs> so this morning I had my, um, well, it's, here it is. My apple, <laughs> the knife was for my peanut butter. So I had um, an apple with peanut butter to uh, start my day. And I do not measure my tablespoons of peanut butter. I probably consume about a quarter of a cup or more <laughs> of mm -hmm. peanut butter with my apple. And then um, I don't really eat meals. I, I eat based on my hunger. So, you know, lunchtime is probably going to be a refried bean, <laughs> excuse me, a refried bean roll up. And I put it on top of uh, lettuce and I put a little bit of dressing on top. So I get the, um, the fiber and the wonderful nutrients that come from the legumes. Dinner. Who knows? Like I said, I don't, I'm primarily a vegetarian, so it's, it might be, um, a dish I love to make is I do, I do onions and garlic and peppers. So like a, any kind of bell pepper. Mm -hmm. And then I put uh, chopped up potatoes with that. And, and I like that as a dish, uh, any kind of beans, like a chili, like a vegetarian chili with um, black beans, pinto beans, uh, chili spice, tomatoes, and um, sweet potatoes. Chop those up and put it in. Makes a delicious chili. Yeah. Um, and I, I do like smoothies. I haven't gotten back to them per se because I'm waiting for it to get much hotter. And I love my dad's juicer. So my favorite juice to make is I use um, celery, carrots, a green apple, and some ginger. And I juice that all down. It's so good. That sounds good. Yeah. And you um, Depending on how much ginger you put in it, <laughs> you know, you can do like a little shot or you can, if it's too, it's, it's too peppery, you can put in more apples. Yeah. But, um, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, if, if you want something that's low carb, you know, you keep, you don't use a lot of apples. If you want to add some more, sure. put, the, put the apples in. But apples, all those have wonderful nutrients in them with healing properties and anti-cancer properties. So, sure. um, so that's that's a little bit. I, I eat a lot of nuts because okay. they have a staying power. Yeah, yeah. So many packed with vitamins and minerals and all that good stuff. So what's next for you? Do you, what are you working on? What do you see for yourself in the next few years? What, what, what are you working Just on? Just keep doing what I'm doing and building what I'm working on. You know, I have not hit my monetary goals yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely want to, want to hit those. Um, I don't, I'm not going to write another book just yet. I'm just going to keep my focus on what I'm doing now, building out my courses and my programs, getting those really streamlined and then moving forward. So I. Are they I, in person or virtual or everything? Is everything is virtual. Um, so I run a group coaching program, which is um, it's called the rank. And it's a it's a 12 week program, although I do have people in it that I let in for a lifetime seven years ago. And I step them through two courses that I've created. One is create your skaters meal plan template, which introduces them to how to flesh out a breakfast, a hockey strong mid-morning snack, a lunch, mid-afternoon snack, pre and post dinner and bedtime snack, just like what I said at the beginning of our conversation. So they learn how to do that. They get to ask me questions in a Facebook group if they're having trouble with something. Obviously they have to show me what they've done. Sure. So I have to see that they're doing the work and then I give them feedback on how to tweak the particular meal. And then after they work through that, then they go into my create a championship plate course, which teaches them it's uh, five weeks. So week one, they learn how to use food to increase speed. We get through that. And then the next module of stamina builds on what they learn in the speed module. Um, so they learn how to use food to increase stamina, food to increase focus, food to help them build muscle. And the fifth one is I call it, it's all in the timing, which takes a look at a game day so that they know, you know, oh, my skater has a game at eight in the morning. Um, what should they eat? Mm -hmm. Well, not your typical bacon and eggs, because I've seen that on the ice before when a kid ate like that with an hour and a half before ice time. Right. Literally. And um, 
so it's it's teaching them yeah all, all, pretty much all food that the skaters come to me eating is good you know a lot of them aren't eating enough fruits and vegetables of course mm -hmm. um over emphasis on protein mm -hmm. but um so i teach them how to use food to how to use food when to use food how much food and what time to help their skaters improve so i, I really i really like that i I haven't worked with one-on-one -on -one client in a while. Um, I enjoy that, um, like one shots. Like I have one mom, uh, she's down in Texas, who's got a younger son who's only six. And um, it's really great working with her because her, her son has some special needs. He's a wonderful hockey player. He is very tall for his age. Um, but nutritionally speaking and developmentally speaking, there, there are different things that we're doing with nutrition to help him. So I, I really love working with her. Um, I've worked with a skater that was 18 who needed to lose 25 pounds. He was out in California. So we worked one-on-one -on -one, and that's typically like one call a week. And then in between those calls, I'm giving you homework, you know, right. to watch this module and then bring your questions or flesh out what you do and then bring your questions to our next talk so Fantastic. as a matter of fact i have a mom who reached out to me from texas who says so and so referred her to me she wants you know she wants to talk to me about her son's nutrition and gave me her phone number and her email told her what what team her son plays with so i um i contacted her this morning and i'm waiting to hear back from her so we'll we'll get on a we'll get on a zoom call to see if it would be a good fit and see which way we're going to go fantastic so, yeah. yeah that's so important just um, teaching nutrition in general at a young age and getting parents on board is just, it's just so important. Um, yes. yes. So where can people find you? How can they find your class? Where can they find either a site or a, just information about you? So you can go to uh, www.hockeymomrd.com. I will make a disclaimer. The site is in, it's in the works, but it's still public. So you can read a little bit and you're going to see some stuff that's like, what has she got there? Because I'm still working on it, but I wanted to keep it live anyway. You can follow me on Instagram at HockeyMomRD, or you can email me at HockeyMomRD at gmail.com. Great. Fantastic. Any final thoughts or closing remarks that you'd like to, to make before we close it up? I just think the field of nutrition offers so many opportunities for those young men and women or older young men men and women that are looking to get into the field they don't have to think inside the box they can think outside of the box and they can build any kind of career they want to build within nutrition after they've gone through the schooling right. after they've done their internship and after they've passed the national exam True. and then one thing we didn't mention was every five years we need to do our continuing education credits correct yeah so um you know so long as they they do everything, then you've got the world's open. You don't have to stay in this tiny little box and wear a white jacket unless right. you choose to. I mean, right. there's some great, like the nutrition support dietitians in clinical were fantastic. You know, I, I, I loved that. It wasn't yep. for me, but you know, some dietitians love that. So, yeah. And the world of nutrition seems to be expanding a bit um, slowly, but you can get your certification in all different areas, weight loss, sports, oncology. So, um, and hopefully there'll be some more certifications coming out. Um, that would be nice. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I appreciate you being with me today and maybe we'll um, do a follow-up sometime down the, down the road and, maybe hear about a new book or some more classes coming out. <laughs> sure thing. I'd love to speak with you again. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Kim. Take care, Tracy. Okay. Bye. Bye.